Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is episode 93, and actually today, we're gonna look at some toys. So I've been collecting a few things. Uh, these are gonna be the same Venom and Carnage that we're gonna see later on in the uh, Venom line. They'll have the Venom boxes on them. And I saw these at Walmart for like $6 today. So I figured I'll just go ahead and get them now, so that way if we when, when I buy the Venom ones, I can keep them in their boxes. Uh, not that I think they'll be worth a lot one day, but I do like to keep a lot of my Ghost Rider stuff boxed up. And in the boxes, some of my spawn stuff that I've rebought over the years, I like to keep some of that in the boxes. And so with us getting our, not our first line of Venom toys, but our first in a long, long time, I want to, you know, kind of keep some of them in their original boxes uh, just for me personally. Uh, so I figured we'll get these ones and open them. Uh, and actually what I'll do is we'll start with the black costume Spider-Man. This is a slightly different design of the one we normally do. Don't worry, I'm not going to eat the boxes on this, on this episode. Uh, but I did want to talk a little bit about the first appearance of the black costume, and I'll talk about each character's first appearance uh, from the comics, best to my knowledge. Uh, the biggest thing I want to do is correct a mistake that I constantly make. I do it every every time. Like for a comic book historian, uh, which I've been given that title before, and I kind of pride myself in that, I do make mistakes. And one of them that I have trouble with all the time is the first appearance of the black costume. I think even as recent as my latest video, the room tour, I have framed on the wall Secret Wars number eight, and I keep you know saying that that's the first appearance of the black costume, and it's not. It's suppo it was supposed to be, but actually uh, in May of that year, uh, before Secret Wars number eight came out, they uh, there was like an artist out there, like a fan, and he came up with this cool design for a spider costume, uh, it being a black costume with a white spider on it. He did this design. I think there was a red spider, too. And they weren't sure if they were going to use it for Spider-Woman or Spider-Man. There's like a whole story behind it. And uh, for $220, this guy sold the, the drawing to Marvel. Uh, and that drawing became the you know black costume. And then later, Venom and spawned the Carnage and all the other symbiotes. So, man, for $220, that poor guy who uh, who sent in this drawing uh, you know, as a fan... Uh, as fan mail to them and they were like hey we like this we want to use it and they had different kind of things they want to do i think david michelini or one of the writers or someone who was working on the books at the time i can't remember who i know mike zek took over the design and tweaked it a little bit um but um uh, there were people at, at Marvel that were like, oh, we might, we have this idea to have a suit for Iron Fist who that keeps healing itself. Like every time, you know, he gets his suit ripped apart, uh, fans started to ask, hey, how does this costume get put back together? Does he sew it or what's going on? I, you know, and if he's in, you know, if he has these powers, like, is it hurting his suit? Is it, you know, when he uses the fist, does it rip through the costume, you know, or whatever? Uh, like, you know, does it burn the sleeves off or whatever? So they were like, oh, let's come up with this idea of this suit that he, you know, kind of heals itself or, or kind of self replicates or whatever and they never did anything with it with Iron Fist and then it ended up being put into the alien costume when they were folding concepts in together to come up with the black costume so actually the black costume first appeared in like three books uh, I think the main one being Amazing Spider-Man 252 I believe that was the first one and they came out in May of that year I can I can blank it on the year um, and uh, and there was also like a, a Marvel team up I think issue like 41 or 141 and there was a, another Spider-Man issue and, and in that month those three books were the first time you saw the costume and it's basically Spider-Man showing up with the costume and everyone's like whoa what you know monthly readers were like what is this what is this and it said in there like you know to find out how Spidey got this costume wait for Secret Wars number eight which will be out soon so yeah so I want to correct that mistake and if i continue to make it in the future you know let me know that it's not secret wars number eight but it was actually amazing spider-man 252 and that was the first time we saw this costume and i think this design of it or this version of it is from one of the newer spider-man cartoons um i think that's what these are from these these titan hero ones but really uh, the titan hero toys are pretty much the same body mold for all for most of the figures like all the men are one mold and all the women are another mold and uh and they just change out the heads on them and that's just hasbro's way of uh you know uh, keeping things on the cheap basically but also that's in, in my opinion good business uh because you get uh oh, excuse me let me see if there's extra parts in here see there's like a spot on his back um and i was thinking there might be something that goes there but uh, it doesn't look like it uh, but yeah, you know, Hasbro, they're just, it, it's good business to reuse molds and stuff because it's expensive, you know, to pay artists and people to design these and, and get machines working to, you know, replicate them and print them. So if you did a unique mold for every single figure, you'd be out of business like very soon. So, uh, so yeah, so they use a lot of the same molds. So when we pull up Venom and Carnage, you'll see that they're pretty much the same. Uh, but yeah, these figures are really cool. They, they articulate here at the ball joints and the shoulders, uh, his wrist turn which is pretty neat uh the leg goes in pretty much every direction 
Uh, knees don't bend, elbows don't bend, and then head uh, does move on a ball joint. Um, this one's a little stiff, but I'm sure over time it'll it'll you know loosen up. So yeah, that's uh, that's the black costume Spider-Man. Like I said, first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man 252. Uh, we're going to move on to Venom. Uh, again, his costume was in Amazing Spider-Man 252. And his first appearance was kind of like in issue 299, I believe, of Amazing Spider-Man. He kind of had like a cameo. You saw him for like a brief second. And then obviously you saw his hands and stuff like in the issue before that, like pushing Spider-Man into the front of the, the train. But his first full appearance wasn't until issue 300 of Spider-Man. And once again, it's pretty much identical, the body, uh, except his arms only move forward they do not they're not on ball joints his wrists do move uh, he does not have the weird thing in the back this one has a, a spider design not painted though on his back um, he's got a head that moves around a little bit easier than spider-man's but not super easy and the legs only go up and down now i'm gonna guess that maybe the new ones that come out that are you know that are going to come out with the venom line they'll probably be a little bit more flexible because it looks like this is a slightly newer mold. Like these are what the Titan toys used to be where the hands just go up and down and the legs just go up and down. But this one and Scarlet Spider have like these ball joints put in and the legs like are more flexible. So I think that's probably how the next version of these are going to be, which is fine uh, because like I said, I'm still going to keep them in the box. Uh, but Venom did appear, like I said, in Amazing Spider-Man uh, 300. That was his first appearance and I don't think I've ever gotten that one wrong. So, uh, but I know the black costume itself I do get wrong from time to time and the costume is from a planet called Clintar and we've talked about the Clintar race before um, and there's a you know there's a whole planet of them and uh, they have all of them have different motives but the reason I think in Planet of the Symbiotes that they cast out the black costume because Spider-Man found it on Battle World with the Beyonder and all the heroes in Secret Wars were taken to another realm uh, in, in space and everything and they were fighting this big battle against you know good versus evil and the Beyonder was like I want to see what is better good or evil and he had them fight each other and Spider-Man got this new costume from a machine that he thought was, you know, uh, going to stitch up his current costume, but ended up giving him this black costume that wrapped around him. And it turns out we found out the backstory of that, that the costume, out of all the Clintar race, uh, the Venom costume felt uh, more. Uh, it had more emotion on it without having to bond with anybody. And it felt more. And it was kind of seen as like a, a cast, you know, like the, the, the alien race, the Clintars cast it out. And they were like, you know what, let's lock it up. It, it's, it's a perversion of our race. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And we're going to send it to Battle World because they need fighters on that planet. And we're going to send the Clintar costume and hope it gets killed there. So uh, it is kind of a shock when the symbiotes learn that it lived <laughs> and it's on Earth with a human. Uh, so so yeah, so uh, so that's kind of a, a little bit of the backstory of uh, of the alien. And then we have Carnage, who I think first appeared as Cletus Cassidy, created by Mark Bagley, uh, or no, created by Eric Larson and uh, David Michelini, and they created him in the book uh, Amazing Spider-Man, I think it was 344, that's when we first saw Cletus Cassidy in jail with Eddie Brock. Uh, but then he became Carnage in issue 360, he had a cameo, and 361 full on as Carnage. And you'll see this actually uses the newer mold, so he has the uh, wrist that uh, bend there, a twist, so he can twist his hands, um, and then also he has the ball joints in his shoulders so he is not rigid like uh, venom is that he already has the new mold and i think this is a design from one of the new spider-man cartoons also probably ultimate spider-man or something uh but yeah this is has a really neat actually it looks really cool and i think this is pretty much the one that's coming out later in the year except they're going to add more paint applications to the front of it change the look slightly but it's going to be the same mold and same character and obviously it has the leg uh, ball joint too that makes it go in any direction so yeah, I'm happy to add all three of these to my collection. Uh, Venom, you know, I'm a little bummed out. He's uh, so rigid. He's not as fluid with movement as these other two. Uh, but that's, you know, that's fine. I'm sure the next wave will uh, get that. Actually, you know what? Does he? No. There is a there is like a little bend there, but it's it's not. It makes it look like his arm could bend out. That's why I thought it did it the first time, but no, it does not. His arm just goes up and down. But either way, I like having these. I think at Walmart, they only sell them for like six bucks. I think seven at the most sometimes. That's all I've ever seen them for at my Walmart. And um, 
they're worth it. I mean, I just like having them. They have a real presence on my shelf. Like if I'm across the room and they're, they're in the background, you can see them pretty well. Like you'll notice right behind me, you can see some Marvel figures back there. Black Panther, Black Widow, um, Spider-Man from Spider-Man Homecoming. Those are the new Disney figures. I might make a video on those, but I also may keep them in the boxes. I don't know. Uh, but I do like those. I got them for like half price basically, which was really cool. Um, so I bought a bunch of them recently. And uh, I, I, they don't, you know, you can't, like if, if I was like moving over here, you could barely kind of see them. Whereas if I have something like this behind me, it stands out a lot more. So uh, yeah, I like having these on my shelf. So you guys let me know what you think. Do you own any of these, any of the Titan figures? Like I said, they're pretty cheap. So if you're out there and you want to get them, you can find this wave out there right now. And there's also like Spider Girl and Scarlet Spider are also part of the set. And I think Vulture and Sandman as well. So they have a nice collection of characters that you can get out there for really cheap. Um, and if you have small kids, these are definitely great toys for small kids to like, you know, smash against each other. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you in the future. Peace.